If you're new here, subscribe. The information's good, so is the photography, and I'll never waste your time. And if I get popular enough, someday I'll outfit my house with furniture that isn't found on the side of the road. Volvo is on record saying it wants half the vehicles it sells to be fully electrified by 2025. The 2021 Volvo XC90 T8 Recharge that you can buy today is, well, halfway there. It's a plug-in hybrid. It can roam the burbs on electric power only, automatically switching to gas when the battery is spent, a great way for people to dip their toe into electrified vehicles. The EPA rates the all-electric range at 18 miles. Now, the glass half-empty folk are not going to be impressed by that figure. The glass half-full people will see that it's 6,500 miles annually, that this is not drinking dinosaur juice. Charge at work on the boss's nickel, and that would be 36 miles. I'm not here to anoint plug-in hybrids better or worse than pure EVs that don't have an engine or transmission to maintain. Assess your situation and determine what works best for you. Recharge is the moniker Volvo gives its electrified vehicles. The T8 hybrid branding seems de-emphasized here. This two-liter four-cylinder is turbo and supercharged, making 313 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque on its own. Like any hybrid, it doesn't always fire up on start. With an 87-horse electric motor that drives the rear wheels, total system power is 400 horsepower and 472 pound-feet. The 11.6 kilowatt-hour battery pack fills the space the drive shaft occupies on non-electrified XC90s. The location protects the pack during impact, uh, safety. You might have heard, it's a Volvo thing. The pack will fully juice up in two and a half hours using level two charging, which can be difficult or expensive to install. Plug-in hybrids don't really need it because the gas engine always has your back. Using standard 120 current, the pack will charge up in seven hours, easily overnight or while you're at work. The transmission is an eight speed. I am not a fan of having to double tap to select reverse and drive, but the Ore Forest Crystal is a unique touch. No paddles to select gears manually if that's a deal breaker. There are drive modes, including a pure electric mode, the default automatic setting, and an off-road mode that adjusts ride height if the optional air suspension is ordered. Automatic leveling as well. Batteries are affected by temperature. It's been in the high 40s this past week and forced into all electric mode. I'm seeing about 18 miles out of the pack. That's the EPA rated range. And it's kind of fun to watch people's reaction as I pull away in a big Volvo very silently. It's enough oomph for city driving. With only the 87 horse motor driving the back rubber, it's no Tesla Model X in ludicrous mode. At 78 miles an hour, it switches automatically to hybrid mode. The electric range can be held for later use. The generator can charge the pack as well. If you're thinking this is kind of a slug because it's a hybrid and they do have that reputation, uh, no. This XC90 is the most powerful one that you can buy in regular mode. It's turbocharged, it's supercharged, and electrified. It zooms up to 60 miles an hour in five seconds flat, if the kids' stomachs can handle that on a regular basis. Having a choice between efficiency and power is like having your clod caca and eating it too. Once the battery is depleted, it just goes into hybrid mode and the system is pretty darn seamless. It's not anything that you notice. Uh, pushed hard, you will hear the four-cylinder engine, and it's not really throaty, but overall, this system is terrific. At some 5,100 pounds, the recharge is no lightweight. There's some body roll in hard turns, nothing out of the ordinary in class. Excellent 5248 weight distribution and the heavy pack that drops the center of gravity helps handling. Not a lot of road feel coming through the wheel, but it's not bad steering weight, not too light, not too heavy. This handles pretty well for a three-row crossover. 
The suspension is set up on the firmer side of comfort. At speed, rough, patchy pavement reveals a flinty touch to the ride quality, nothing harsh. Little to no wind noise either. The transition from regenerative braking to the friction binders is so smooth, I almost forgot to mention it. This is a quiet, comfortable car, great for road trips, exactly what you'd expect, and visibility is excellent. Also, blind spot warning is standard. Which leads me to safety. If I covered it all, my voice would go hoarse. Let's just say nearly all of the active electronic safety tech a human could want is standard and well done. Volvo's been a pioneer when it comes to automatic emergency braking. The standard system in this vehicle will detect cars, pedestrians, bicyclists, large animals, and if it feels like you can't avoid them, it will actually automatically steer around them. So much safety tech in this vehicle. On the highway, Volvo's driver's aid package called Pilot Assist is pretty darn good. It holds within the lane very nicely, takes gentle curves no problem with your hands off the wheel, and the adaptive cruise control nicely done. Efficiency? Well, I could tell you XC90 Recharge gets 55 mpge on the EPA cycle, and your eyes would glaze over. In the real world, as mentioned, I saw 18 to 19 miles on the battery alone. In hybrid mode, it was 26 miles per gallon around town, as near as I could tell. Not too shabby for a luxurious three-row SUV. That's on premium fuel. Volvo's been turning out handsome interiors for years. This is one of its best. The atmosphere of this high trim inscription model is soothing with materials that look and feel expensive. And it is at $80,000 as tested, fully loaded. That's before state and federal EV tax credits. It's a good value though. A much smaller, comparably equipped Mercedes GLC 350E is $65,000. Range Rover Sport plug-in hybrid begins at 83 large. Walking you through the options, the seats that remain among the most comfortable in the business are infinitely adjustable, heated, vented, and offer a halfway decent massage, though oddly not a Swedish one. Audiophiles will find the Bowers and Wilkins sounds sublime. The advanced air filtration system could be a godsend these days. Lop off $1,500 if you don't need the head-up display and bird's eye camera view. There's also that $1,800 air suspension and the $750 climate package with a heated tiller and mid-row bun warmers. Volvo's user interface has good response and a bright 9-inch screen set lower in the dash. It can draw eyes off the road when in use. That's due in part to the small text and organization that doesn't always seem to flow logically. Volvo is switching to an Android-based system in its newer vehicles. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are standard. Both USB-A and C are supported. There's wireless charging too. The gauge cluster changes depending on what drive mode you're in. While it's not important for plug-in hybrids, the ChargePoint app now works within CarPlay, so if you want to find a station, it gives charger information and directions. Hmm, too bad I can't get into Canada. XC90 can seat either six with captain's chairs or seven here, and there's this option of having a built-in booster seat. I had that in my old Volvo, and I used it more than I'd have thought. Each of the three sections slides independently, so a child in that middle seat can be slid forward closer to parents. There's a climate zone and heated seats for the outboard positions. This is the same in all XC90s, and it does take up some foot room. There's everything parents need to keep the kids organized and occupied, even if they don't have any electronics. As for getting into the Wayback, it's straightforward. Though this is not an overly wide space for adults, and the floor is on the high side for kids. I will say these seats are very comfortable, but the goodness kind of stops there. I'm five foot nine. I have just enough headroom. Knee, leg, and foot room are kind of at a premium. There is storage and cup holders, no USB ports. These hooks are really super beefy. But as far as room, there are other three row crossovers that have more of it. There's always a minivan. Gotta mention minivans.
XC90 was refreshed in 2020, and there are some small enhancements for 2021, like new wheel designs and standard LED cornering headlights. This has always been a handsome rig, and has aged well since it went on sale in 2015. The Thor's Hammer DRLs are still here. It's built in Sweden, and yes, Volvo is assembling vehicles in the US now. Word is the next generation of XC90 will be built in South Carolina. Volvo limits the speed of its cars to 112 miles an hour, if that's a deal breaker for you. And they come with an orange care key that you would give to a teen. It allows parents to limit the top speed even more. <laughs> My dad would have found that advantageous when I was learning to drive. No TP trunk test this week. I called Costco and they're out of stock. Strange times we're living in. Instead, I can show you that furniture that is being given away in this fancy neighborhood will fit back here. Uh, my wife is going to kill me. It's one of those Scandinavian Balanz chairs. I'm pretty sure I can fix this up. There are some handy touches back here. These straps should be standard on all cars. The supply charging cable stash is here, uh, not a lot more. The air suspension can be dropped for easier loading. XC90 isn't a behemoth, and for some that's great, easier to drive and park. It still carries a good amount of stuff. I kept looking for the powered third row, or at least a strap of some sort to raise these seats. It's not an easy thing to do. Oh, and I keep all my old raw footage, so let's flash back to an earlier XC90 I reviewed. Third row up, you're looking at four packs, seats dropped, it grows to over 85 cubic feet, which translates into 13 bundles of softness and absorbency. Uh, FYI, Buick Enclave will take on 20. Let's sum this up, it's red light, green light time. Green lights, uh, how do I put this? The Volvo-ness of the XC90, which is a blend of active and passive safety tech melded to luxury trappings. The feeling of security is like wrapping yourself in a Swedish lamb's wool clip-on blanket. Approaching six years old, the unique Scandinavian design looks as fresh as ever outside and in, plus those seats are great. The T8 recharge powertrain is smooth and powerful. It's not an eco penalty box, handles well too. Yellow lights, uh, nice that it has three rows, but the last one borders on occasional use only. 18 miles of electric range significantly cuts gas station visits, though many will think it's too skimpy. Interface layout could use some refinement and larger font. Red lights, pile on the niceties and the recharge can get expensive. An $80,000 Volvo is not something shoppers expect. The need to double tap the shifter is annoying, not sure I'd get used to it. And the third row needs a pull strap or electric motor. It's not easy to raise. Not a ton of three-row plug-in hybrids out there. There are the Land Rovers and Lincoln Aviator Grand Touring that has an interior to rival the XC90. Go fully electric now with Tesla Model X or wait and check out the likes of Cadillac Lyric, GMC Hummer EV SUV, or Rivian R1S. I get it, electric vehicles have distinct advantages over plug-in hybrids. There's no engine or transmission to maintain, but not everybody has access to easy charging, so plug-ins make a lot of sense for some people, especially those who occasionally need to travel long distances and can't or don't want to stop and juice up. Plus, the charging infrastructure in rural areas is still poor. Like always, assess your needs, buy the vehicle that works for your situation. The XC90 Recharge is a safe way to make fewer trips to the gas station, which is a luxury in and of itself. XC90's retail price begins at $64,400 before tax credits. A shopping mistake that many people make is not getting a dealer's price, which can be much lower depending on the manufacturer and individual dealerships. Don't make that mistake. Make real-world pricing part of your shopping strategy. I have a new quote service designed to help. Give it a try. The link is in the video description or go to my website, tomvolk.com. Special thanks to Martin Campbell for driving so I can shoot running footage. It's a good excuse to hang out and talk about cars and family and listen to Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. Martin, he's good people and part of my bubble. I'm often asked where I shoot. Uh, frankly, I have at least 20 places to film the running footage and keep the visuals fresh. I'm serious about the information and production values in these videos. 
For privacy, I won't specify the locations, but they're in and around the Seattle metro area. My main criteria is that there are no other cars in view. That way you concentrate on the one that I'm reviewing. So most spots are upmarket. Many of you think because I shoot in these fancy neighborhoods that I live in a fancy neighborhood. I don't. Um, maybe Doug DeMiro can live in a fancy neighborhood. I can't. And I'm okay with that. Seattle is a world-class city, and I live in a comfortable house with a lovely woman, and I constantly drive awesome vehicles and have fun with cameras. If life is half as good for you, uh, count your blessings. This is the end. Time for the fun fact. Let's talk about the Volvo name and logo. Volvo is somewhat of a variant of a Latin word that means I roll. Now, that is not the greatest name for a car company that's all about safety, but you have to remember, Volvo got its start as a ball bearing company. And what are ball bearings made out of? Steel. Now, the logo may mean masculinity, but it also is the chemical symbol for iron. And that diagonal bar? Well, there's some thought that originally it was simply used to affix the logo to the grill. That's disputed, but uh, maybe, maybe not. Remember, subscribe to this channel. All of those graphics should be coming up right now. It's very easy. You'll never want to miss any of these reviews, right? Right. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.